Okay, so in this video, we're just going to talk about the introduction to the gas laws. Okay, so the four variables that deal with gases, and then really quick conversions for the main types of units you have to use for a few of them. Okay, so that's it. Nothing super confusing. Okay, so gas laws, all right? There are a bunch of different gas laws we're gonna talk about later. Boyle's, Charles, combined gas law, ideal gas law, whatever, okay? Right now, we're just gonna look at the variables and we're just gonna look at easy peasy conversions, okay? So when you deal with gas laws, there are four main variables that you deal with, okay? Those are pressure, volume, temp, and I always call it the amount because I think that makes more sense. Okay, so the amount of gas, but you can talk about that as like the moles of gas, just, so just how much, how much gas do you have, okay? So these are the four that you actually need to pay attention to, and the way, at least for me, that I always like to think about it, <clears throat> is that they're all kind of interconnected. So I don't know who first explained this one to me, but I always really liked the visual. So kind of think about it like a compass, okay? And you have all four of those going around. It doesn't matter, there's no, there's no test on, a, on the compass, okay? It's just that basic idea. So you have pressure, volume, temp, pressure, okay? and amount. Again, so how much, okay? And the reason I, I loved this when someone showed it to me was because if you push on one part of it, the other things are affected. If you pull on one part of it, the other things are affected, the other variables are affected, okay? If you just look at it like in a list, you don't really get that that sense, right? You don't necessarily get that sense that if I change pressure, something else is affected. Or if I change the temperature, something else is affected. So I, I, I don't know. For me, I always liked seeing it like this, thinking that they're all interconnected with each other, okay? All right, so now I'm trying to figure out what the heck these things are, okay? <laughs> so pressure, the way I always, this is the hardest one, we'll come back, pressure will be the last one, okay? Volume's the easiest, because duh, right? Okay, so volume is just how much space. Okay, so how much space does that gas actually take up? And we always talk about this in liters, okay? Um, not much more to say about that. All right, so volume is just how much space the gas takes up. Let me talk about it in liters. Temperature, okay? Temperature is, is actually talking about like how hot, right? Kind of, but it's really the speed of the gas, okay? So the hotter the temperature, the faster it's moving, the colder the temperature, the slower it's moving. So in everything about temperature, we're actually talking about a measure of its kinetic energy, which is neat, okay? And we talk about that in units of Kelvin. We haven't used Kelvin yet, okay? We'll talk about how to convert to that. It's not confusing at all zero degrees Kelvin, zero Kelvin, there's no degrees in Kelvin. Actually, fun fun fact for you, there's a convention in like the 1950s, I think, at like a world science convention, and scientists decided Kelvin's so important, we're gonna drop the degree. It used to be like degree Kelvin, degree Fahrenheit, degree Celsius. Kelvin, so cool, he doesn't get degree, he's just Kelvin, okay? Anyway, zero Kelvin is absolute zero, where like everything stops, it's neat, look it up. Okay, the amount, right? So volume, temperature, amount is just how much, okay? So how much gas do you have? And we always talk about that in moles. Easy, okay? And of course, make sure you know how to go from grams to mole, okay? How to use your molar conversions, very important. 
and pressure, okay, is the hardest one to conceptualize. I think all three of these are very easy to think about. The way I think about pressure is the amount of push on the container of a gas, right? So a gas is within a container. If the pressure is really high, then the gas inside that is pushing really hard on that container. If the pressure is really low, the gas isn't actually pushing very hard on, on the pressure at all, on the container at all, right? We'll look at some examples, okay? But, but pressure is kind of the amount that the gas is pushing on the container, okay? And that's talked about in atmospheres, ATM, atmospheres. All right, so um, I do just want to kind of show you, okay? My attempt at showing you, okay? Here we go. So imagine here's a gas in a container, okay? It's always a closed container. You have to have a closed container, okay? You cannot have a gas in an open container because the gas will escape and you're not measuring anything, okay? So you have a closed container with a lid and you have the four variables that of course affect your gas. So um, temperature, right? So how fast the particles are actually moving in here, the volume it takes up, okay, the amount that's in there. So I could add more gas or I could take out gas. And then the amount of pressure, so how much these particles are actually bouncing on the walls of your container, right? I mean, these are all flying around crazy fast. Gases are moving at a super ridiculously fast speed, okay? And they're bouncing into the walls of your container. If I change one thing, about this situation, about this system, it will affect the others. So I could change the volume. I can compress this gas, right, by pushing the lid down, if you will, like imagine a syringe or something and you're squeezing the syringe, okay? If you push this down, I, all I've done right now is change the volume, okay? I didn't change the amount, I didn't take out any particles, but these things are much closer together now, right? They are banging into each other a lot more. They're gonna be banging into the side of the container a lot more. They're pushing on the side of the container a lot more. So if I push this volume down, if I decrease the volume, I'm actually increasing the pressure, okay? But you get the, the basic idea, right? So if I change one variable about the system, the other variables of your gas is also going to be affected. Okay, those other variables will be affected. All right. Also really quickly, just how we draw gas particles. Okay. So you're gonna draw them in a closed container. And it doesn't matter how many of them you draw. Okay. For like initial and final conditions, but you always draw them with some kind of arrow. Okay. Which would show their speed. Right? So if you're showing, these are hypothetical, right? So initial versus final conditions, right? And if I had that as my initial and this as my final, okay? What I'm showing here is that the volume was constant Okay, the box size is about the same. My amount was also constant. But what changed? My temperature changed. Temperature increased because the arrows are longer, right? So it's showing that the particle is moving at a faster speed. And because my temperature is increased, so imagine these little gas particles, like, you know, very nicely going you know, bounce, 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 bounce on the container versus over here, they're frigging flying a lot faster. It's <laughs> a lot of Fs. Okay, so they're going like boom, 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 boom. They're pushing a lot harder on the container. So that would mean the pressure would also increase. Okay, so you will be asked, or you should be asked to draw like initial and final conditions or somehow show that you understand what a gas particle looks like, the concept of 
you know, how they're moving. So keep that in mind. I mean, obviously, if you had like an initial and a final like this, okay. Oh my God, I'm not gonna draw arrows on every single one because that's gonna take too long. Or I am because I'm OCD. All right, so if I had this to initial to final, okay, your volume increased, your amount increased, your temperature stayed constant, right? The size of the arrows are about the same. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna like, you know, take a ruler and double check, but it, it's again, the concept, right? So if the size of the arrow is the same, that means the particles are moving at the same speed. And the pressure in this case would be constant as well, right? So imagine it's like proportional. You get the basic idea, okay? That's how we would draw it. That's how you kind of explain conceptually what's going on with your different gas particles. Last thing about intro to uh, your gas laws are quick conversions, okay? So for pressure, you're always going to want your units to be in atmospheres. And the abbreviation for that is ATM, okay? And none of these are hard. They're on the back of your periodic table. You should be able to see a little section that says gas laws or gases. Okay, and one atmosphere is 760 tor. It's 760 mmHg millimeters of mercury. Uh, interesting. Uh, 101.3 kilopascals, kPa, whatever. There's a whole bunch of um, different conversions that are given to you, okay? And to do these conversions, it's real easy, right? So if I was given a problem that had like 78.2 tor and I needed to convert that into atmospheres, the ATM, it's just like any normal conversion, you multiply by a blank conversion, I need to get out of tor, get into atmospheres, Tor goes on your denominator, atmospheres is on your numerator, and then you just plug in your conversion rate. So 760 on the denominator, one atmosphere on the numerator, your Tor and Tor will cancel, you get a units of ATM. So 78.2 divided by 760. All right, now that I've actually solved for it, 0 0.103 atmospheres okay so converting is not difficult atmosphere to any of your other pressure units okay all right and last but not least is kelvin that's for temperature you're always going to want to end kelvin and the abbreviation for that is just straight k right not degree k just k and this is really easy okay so a temperature in kelvin equal to your temperature in degrees Celsius plus 273 okay you will see these little subscripts in your like on the back of your periodic table um, if that doesn't make sense you could just think Kelvin is equal to whatever your degree Celsius is plus 273 okay but you will see it notated like this typically right temperature in Kelvin is equal to temperature in Celsius plus 273. So I don't really know if we need to do an example of this, but for example, okay, uh, typically your showers will top out at about 40 degrees Celsius. They put a more fun facts for you, right? They put a little, um, well, like a regulator on the temperature of your shower so you don't turn it up too high and like scald yourself to death. So. If I was taking a shower at 48 degrees Celsius and I wanted to convert that to Kelvin, I just add 273 and I would get 321 Kelvin would be the temperature you're taking a shower at. How exciting. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, the other conversions you'll have to do, you'll have to be able to convert grams to mole. 
uh, when you're talking about the amount of a gas, so you could be told, you know, you had 18.2 grams of carbon dioxide, you'll have to convert that to moles. That should be easy. And uh, for your volume, you also have to know how to do your metric conversions, okay? So liter, milliliter, uh, I can't think of any other type of conversion they would give you other than milliliter to liter, okay? And that's pretty much it for gas laws, okay? So it's just those four variables that interact with each other, pressure, volume, temperature, and amount, okay? Um, good luck.